Hi, welcome to Writers on Writing. Let's talk with author, poet, and translator Jasmine Mendez. Well, let me ask you now about theme. And do you put these like life lessons and um, or insights into what it means to be like a mother and daughter or um, or issues? Do, do you put those into your books on purpose and and or does does the awareness kind of come out naturally from the creative process where you realize, oh, that's that's what this book is about after after it's over? Because um, your books do delve into some issues, relationships. The character certainly learns life lessons. Um, so how do you how do you make sure that the book like you it means something at by the end? You know? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I think it's a little bit of of again, each book is different. And I think it's a little bit of, of all of that. Um, you know, and I know, and I've heard other writers say this too, right? Like I, I go in with an intention of like, this book is going to be about this, or like the central theme or idea is like this, right? And then you write and you work and these characters don't listen. <laughs> they do what they want, you know, and or, or, or like, as you're drafting, and as you're revising, you pick up on things that I think subconsciously we put into to books that we're not aware of. And you start to see these threads of ideas or images, um, themes that you're like, oh, hmm, okay, this is coming up a lot. Let me see why. Let me see what 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 is there to follow in this sort of thread that I'm seeing, right? And so then suddenly, it's like, oh, crud! This book is actually about this other thing that I had no intention of. And so then for me, at least in revision, then I tend to lean into that a little bit more if it seems to be making sense and seems to be helping the story. Because you also have to ask yourself like. Is this helping it? Is it hurting it? Is it distracting from this, the original story that I want to tell? Is this really the story and and not kind of, you know, what I intended? You know, an example from Aniana is there's actually a lot of discussion about mental health in the book that I just kind of organically put in there. And it wasn't until other people really pointed it out that I was like, oh, uh-huh. this book really is kind of about mental health. And like, let's lean into that. Let's talk about that. Let's Let's see how we can kind of you know, have discussions around that or build on that and kind of, you know, um, and I think it's okay when some themes are more subtle, you don't have to lean into it and kind of make it be this big thing. It's just kind of like, yeah. oh, that's like a third sort of sub layered theme that's in there. But the main theme is this, right. Um, but I think it's good to know that to pay attention to that, especially after the book is published for you to be able to talk about that and say, like, actually, you know, this is this is also a part of the story. It's not a prominent theme, but it's there. It exists. You can have discussions around it. Um, and so, yeah, I think I think that I am definitely intentional, um, you know, but I, I think that the themes and those the sort of central ideas can evolve and change, like as you're revising and working on things and as your editor is kind of in your ear and talking, you know, and things like that, and your your beta readers and um, your trusted sort of critique group, if you have one, can help you find things that you're like, oh, I see there's a lot of threads about flowers and seeds and growing. Do you want to do anything with that? And it's like, actually, now that you mention it, that's a good idea, right? Um, and because there's things again that I think our subconscious does as creatives that are you know unintentional that we that we're not trying to do it, but then again, revise in revising, you're like, ah, okay, now I can be intentional about this and really kind of make this image or this theme kind of sing a little bit more. I can pull it out a little bit more and um, and, and make it work for me rather than just being sort of this happy accident, um, which there still are. I think that there are still things that are like happy accidents that are that are just yeah. there, and it's in like your final sort of review of the book before it gets published, you're like, oh, I hadn't noticed that until just now. Cool. I'm a genius. <laughs> you know, it, that's, what, that's how I feel, at least for about five minutes. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Um, you know, and so, so yeah, I, I think it's definitely um, a mix of, of of all three or of a few of those. Um, and at least for me, I, I know that I've always, um, I've never sort of uh, set out with just the one thing and then like, that's the thing that the book always and you know I stick to it there's always some way that it morphs or adapts or gets totally revised um and so so I think but I think that's kind of like the fun part about writing I think some people get frustrated by that or feel overwhelmed by that and to me I'm like no that's where it's like really exciting to be able to kind of create this thing and, and watch it change um you know because once it's published it's like it's done you know and so it's like you can't you know, if you're lucky, you might get like a 20th anniversary edition where you can change things, but most of us just get the one shot, you know? So, um, so I like that process of, of kind of figuring it out and watching it 
you know, morph and evolve, um, you know, in drafting and revising. I love that because the it's like the creative process as you participate in it, you're, there's discovery and there's, yeah. And so that what you first started out with, it does change, it morphs and it deepens and whatever. Yeah. Um, it, this, it kind of reminds me though that there, it feels once in a while I come across a book that feels forced like that someone's preaching at me with the theme or with the message um and then that seems like a danger like once you realize oh this is you you can lean into it but without actually saying directly to the reader like mm -mm -mm. <laughs> but you you don't do that your your books have a very you know lived experiences with within which the character kind of arrives at some of these life lessons and then and then yeah and then motifs and themes are also like enriching the story um so good job with the not preaching at the reader <laughs> I try it's hard it's hard but I think yeah I think there there has to be a nice balance of sort of again letting it sort of be subtle and organic um and happen like with the the narrative right and the plot and the dialogue and the things the characters say rather than like yeah. someone on the soapbox saying like you need to be good to your parents or like you need to you know not lie like uh secrets are bad right like there is a little bit of that but it's better to like that it's like a discovery thing that happens like with the action and with the character development and the relationships between characters and that we see it and can understand it like and kind of tease it out for ourselves um, and like I said, yeah. other themes that are kind of like third or fourth, like layered in there kind of as well that maybe aren't just like in your face as as a parent. Yeah. Oh, I love that. 